Those worlds in space are as countless as all the grains of sand on all the beaches of the Earth. A few years ago, a study by Australian astronomers came up with an estimate of 76 billion stars in the known universe. This is about 10 times as many stars as grains of sand on all the world's beaches and deserts. Much more than even Carl Sagan's estimate. And that is only the stars our Hubble Space Telescope can actually see. The astronomers admitted that the number could actually be much bigger. Dr. Frank Drake, Professor Emeritus of Astronomy and Astrophysics at the University of California, Santa Cruz, devised an equation to estimate the number of extraterrestrial civilizations in our galaxy. There have been a number of criticisms regarding the equation's effectiveness, since most of the terms in the equation are largely based on assumptions and therefore subject to wide variation. Carl Sagan used and quoted the formula often. There was even an episode in his famous 1980 television series Cosmos, A Personal Voyage, where he uses the Drake equation to calculate n, which is the number of civilizations in our galaxy, with which communication might be possible. The Drake equation has been recalculated by different groups of scientists since Sagan's passing, and different values of n have been obtained, applying widely varying parameters. Values of n have ranged from around 2.3 civilizations in our galaxy, with which communication might be possible, to over a million. One must remember that the Drake equation considers only the possibility of life in one galaxy that is our own Milky Way. To put things in perspective, it is now believed by astronomers and scientists that there are over a hundred billion galaxies in the known universe. Our own galaxy, the Milky Way is generally thought to be a larger than average galaxy. Even if we take a very conservative figure of one technologically advanced civilization per galaxy, it still becomes a mind-boggling figure of over a hundred billion technologically advanced civilizations in the known universe. Drake was probably not interested in looking at the possibility of life in other galaxies, perhaps thinking they were too far away for any contact to be made. The mistake he and other scientists make is in unconsciously assuming that a technologically advanced civilization must rely on radio astronomy and rocket propulsion for communication and space travel. With the current scientific awareness that suggests points in the universe separated by millions of light years apart can be linked instantaneously by means of wormholes or dimensional portals, this constraint enforced by distance no longer holds. That is, a sufficiently advanced civilization would have transcended the limitations enforced by radio communication or rocket propulsion and would have mastered the science of portal creation by bending space to their advantage. Thus the Drake equation must consider the universe as a whole instead of just our galaxy. Of course, civilizations advanced to such levels may not number a hundred billion in our universe since that figure is for those civilizations who have reached our level of advancement. But they should at least be in the hundreds if not thousands. Which brings us to the most important question, if there must be such a high number of advanced civilizations, why is there such an apparent lack of evidence? This is known as the Fermi paradox since it was Enrico Fermi, the brilliant Italian physicist and Nobel laureate who first asked that question. To answer this question, we must first examine whether there is truly such a lack of evidence. Granted, an alien spaceship has not yet landed on the White House lawns, and no alien has been reported to have asked a human that stereotypical question. Take me to your leader. But there have been innumerable UFO sightings from all over the world from people of all walks of life. Such sightings have been reported from medieval times and continuing to present day. History is replete with icons imagery and fables that portray strange lights in the sky and visitors from beyond our planet. To dismiss all the thousands of sightings, many from credible witnesses and ascribe often ridiculous explanations, is hypocritical to say the least, since on one side the skeptical scientists says science is all about impartial inquiry, 
and on the other he takes every effort to dismiss the many sightings, with often highly implausible explanations. I do not wish to go into individual sightings themselves, since that is too vast and beyond the scope of this video. In any case, there are innumerable videos, and case files out there on the internet, about credible sightings. So it seems that it is more a case of unwillingness on the part of mainstream scientists to accept the available evidence than a case of no evidence at all. This unwillingness may stem from the fact that these advanced alien beings, for some reason until now, have been playing hide-and-seek with us. They haven't yet come out in the open and made large-scale contact with human beings, but occasionally pops up here and there as if to signal their presence. It seems as if they are watching us and watching over us. Why haven't they come out in the open? To answer the question, we have only to look at ourselves. Human beings are, by and large, still greedy, violent and exploitative as can be seen from the many wars, injustices and disparities that exist in the world today. They are jealous, egotistical and full of prejudices that cause disharmony and hatred. The extremely advanced technology that these alien races are bound to possess, have the potential of being misused if some form of technology transfer follows after open contact. Such misuse can have catastrophic consequences for the planet as a whole. Therefore the most logical explanation to me, is that they are watching and waiting until we grow up collectively, and come out of this adolescence into a race of completely peaceful, loving and joyous creatures. It is obvious that in order for a civilization to reach the highest levels of scientific advancement, the civilization must have conquered hate and war and separateness, for such things are ultimately suicidal for its survival. It is therefore eminently clear that these alien beings have themselves transcended all such petty characteristics and are peaceful, loving and joyous in nature. The very fact that in spite of the countless sightings, there has not been a single record of any violent engagement is proof of their peacefulness. In some ways, I feel they, in spite of their advanced technology, are actually scared of us, due to our violent nature and unpredictability. Only the pure spirituality, that is rooted in the realization, that there is essentially no separation, whatsoever between individuals that make up the human race, can lead it to this joyous existence. It is fashionable among scientists to think spirituality and science as mutually incompatible. Actually spirituality and science have the same goals and are essentially the same. Only the language they speak are different. While both essentially seek to understand man and the cosmos that wraps around him, spirituality does so using the language of intuition, while science does so using that of perception. Where science discriminates and categorizes, spirituality unifies and integrates. Thus only through spirituality will we understand that all forms of separation are an illusion. By realizing this we conquer our own discriminating egos. We collectively become one. Thus all separating emotions such as hate and greed and jealousy and violence lose their very meaning. This is when we ascend. This is ascension. Once this happens, we will be at a level to receive the gifts of our galactic brothers who have been patiently watching over us for millennia. The gifts that make technology and money redundant. The gifts we realize we always had, 